Hey guys, it's Tamara Bennett from Southern Adornments Decor. I'm so excited you're here. Okay, so tonight we're gonna be painting one of my all-time favorite designs that I created myself, Mama's Little Chicks. And you guys know I'm a chicken-obsessed kind of person, so I created this one with myself in mind. Although I technically only have three children, it doesn't really matter. I'm still gonna paint all four chickies on here just cause I think it's adorable. Okay, so tonight we're gonna be painting the Mama's Little Chicks door hanger. If you want to go and grab this from the store, you can get it, let me rearrange my desk a little bit. You can get it in template form, which is only $5. You can get um, the blank, which is etched like this. This is the 20 inch size for $24. You can also get it in 12 inches, eight or six or you can purchase it painted. Now the painted version is 16 inches tall, I think. Now it's gonna be a challenge not to get any of this paint on my shirt. Okay, I'm, last week when I painted the cow, I forgot to do a time-lapse video on my phone up here, and I was so sad because I, that cow was the cutest, so I had to make sure and turn that on. All right, so let's get started. So we're gonna start by painting the entire area around the chicks white because I'm gonna do a buffalo plaid pattern with like a really light white like light, light blue gingham hang on we gotta I, I do my craft desk is just a wreck lately there we go we'll just throw things in the floor so let's get our white and then i've got my water not to be confused with my drinking water <laughs> Whew, i'm still sweating from running up and down the stairs um we're not going to use that brush we'll use this little brush I have ordered some of these, by the way. So one of the ladies that was at my Southern Adornments live show in Nashville, they we got these in our swag bags and we used them at the event and they were talking about how much they loved these little brushes. So I have ordered some more so that I can sell them in the shop for you guys. Um, so if you need a good like background painting brush, this is a good one to have. And I'm not staying inside the lines around these little chicks. I'm just slapping it on because when we go to paint the chicks, it will cover the white. Matter of fact, our chicks are yellow, so it might even be good if we put a little bit of white on our chicks so that the yellow shows up better. So I'm gonna go ahead and give them a quick little coat. They don't have to be covered real good, just a nice little base coat. All right, I added a little bit of water to my white paint because it was not smoothing out as well as I would have liked. Tell us about the wall behind you. Okay, Pamela, I actually have a whole blog post about the wall behind me showing how we did it. Um, you can get that or look at that at southernadornmentsdecor.com forward slash blog. But essentially, it is all made using pallet wood. We cut up the pallets. We didn't take them apart. You know, like some people deconstruct the pallets and try to, you know, salvage the longest pieces they can. We didn't do that. We just use a sawzall and cut it all up as much as we could. And then we mounted a piece of half inch plywood to the wall. And then um, we attached each individual pallet piece to the half inch plywood. We nail, used a nail gun to attach it. And then I painted them just kind of with a rough dry brush technique with lots of color. Um, as you notice, this design is etched in the, it has the design etched in the surface. I can paint right over those etched lines and still see them. They might not be visible in the video to you guys, but um, in person, I can still very well see them. So it doesn't matter. I can paint right over the top of them and then still keep painting the design later. And I do sell these in the shop. Um, do you recommend the back of the paint? Um, I don't ever paint the backs of my door hangers. Now, I know some people do. Um, if you have a clear glass door that you're hanging it on sometimes it's a good idea to paint the back i sold these for years and never painted the backs and i never had a single customer complain so i think it's just all personal preference if you feel like it's something that needs to be done if it bothers you go right ahead but like i said i never had a single customer complain that the back was not painted and i know some people like the backs are really messy when they get done with them and so they feel like they need to clean that up by painting the back a solid color um, the backs of mine aren't ever messy, I guess, because I kind of keep my door hanger in one spot for the most part. Um, so that it doesn't shift around too much to get messed up. Okay. We need this to be really good and dry before we can do the next part. So let me use my hair dryer and we will move on. 
That's a great question, Donna. I do not paint the edges of mine. As you can see, they are laser cut. And so the edges are nice and crisp and black because the laser kind of burns the edge. And so I never paint the edges of them. If I was to paint the edges of these, it soaks the paint up. I would have to do like three coats over the edges and it's just like, it feels like wasted time to me. I like that nice crisp black edge so it doesn't bother me. If you're laser, or if you are cutting your blanks yourself, I've got to grab some painter's tape. If you're cutting your blanks yourself with a jigsaw or something like that, it is a good idea to paint uh, the edges so that they look a little cleaner. Um, is the hairdryer hot or cold? Hot. Hot air. It dries and it kind of like dehydrates the water in the paint. There's still a little bit of spot. <laughs> um, you guys are sharing awesome tips. Callie asked, how are your nails holding up? Callie, one hand is doing better than the others. She's talking about my uh, Color Street nails. I applied them on Facebook Live last, what was it, Thursday night? So it's been like six days now, something, seven days, five days. This hand is not holding up as well. As you can see, the very tips of these two fingers, and I've got paint on my hands, but the very tips of these two fingers is starting to chip off. The thumb still looks pretty good. Um, the reason for that is, is because I was busting down pallets out in the garage earlier and very, being very, very rough on my nails, like unusually rough. So um, I may get out the other, the rest of the set that I have and just repair those two nails so that the, the rest of my manicure looks good the rest of the time. What brand tape do you prefer? This is frog tape and this is like an inch and a half wide and I'm just gonna eyeball it and lay it down on here and smooth it out. And then we'll use a little piece kind of as a, a width guideline. This is gonna be pretty quick. Like it's gonna look like it's gonna take a while. Whoops, hang on. It'll look like this is gonna take a while, but it, it won't. When it when when I get all this tape on there, it's gonna move a lot faster. Because we're gonna use a baby wipe to apply the paint and it will go so quick. Okay, my ball in again. There we go. Now let's move this little guideline piece over right there. We're getting, if you have placed an order for door hanger blanks, we are getting to do another shipment tomorrow. So if your order was placed before yesterday morning, what was yesterday? Yesterday was Monday. So if your order was placed before Monday morning, then it will be shipping out tomorrow. Oh, I pulled off way too much tape that time. Whoops, my little guideline piece got ripped. It's all right. It's really hard to know how much you need and I pull off way too much every time. Okay, last piece, last piece. This part is the boring part to me. I'm like, just, just get on with it. But the results are so worth it where I'm trying to be patient right now because the, the impatient crafter in me right now is like, let's just slap some paint on something. Okay, now, let me make sure it's pressed down nicely in all the areas so we don't have any bleed through if possible. Okay, now we are gonna take some, uh, let's see, is this Bahama Blue? I need some Bahama Blue paint, please. It's somewhere on this little twirly cart. That's Sea Breeze. There's Bahama Blue. Okay, it's a really light shade of blue. I'm gonna actually probably mix this color. I want it to be more, more blue than teal. So I'm gonna mix a little bit of blue into this. Here we go. So I've got this color called Bright Blue. We're gonna do just a little bit of that in there. Enough to change the color. And then I'm gonna use the bottom of my paintbrush to stir. Come on, mix, 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 mix. Okay, that's looking about right. Paper towel handy. Okay. 
running out of craft desk space here. All right, now for my baby wipes. I've got all this hair in my face. I can't see what I'm reaching for. <laughs> Michaela says, not boring, learning or teaching. I know, but I like to like be slapping paint on something all the time. So this is the slow part. Okay, so you've got a nice, fresh, wet baby wipe. That is important. You're going to dip it in some of the paint. Then you're just going to smear this baby wipe all over your door hanger to get the wood covered good. Then you're going to switch to, let's get a second baby wipe. That'll be easier. Two baby wipes. You're going to take your second baby wipe and wipe off the excess. You don't want a ton of it on there. I probably wiped off too much, so well, hang on. Let's be a little bit more generous. Okay, so I want it to kind of look uh, opaque, if you will. Like, I don't want it to be real thick. So let me dip in the, the baby wipe in the paint again for the next stripe. I'm gonna spread the paint evenly, and then just go back and forth to kind of smooth it out. And yes, I am going right on top of where my baby chick was and my hen. Okay, switch to the cleaner baby wipe, and then just wipe a little bit of the excess off. That will keep it looking kind of opaque. All right, I'm gonna fold this over because once you wipe once or twice, the baby wipe starts to kind of get goopy and deteriorated. Dip in some more paint. This part, we look, I got too much paint for that little area, so we're gonna skip that for a second and just use it right through here. Let me smooth it out. Okay, and then get my extra baby wipe and kind of wipe off a little bit of the extra. So you will have like baby wipe debris on your door hanger when you're done, but you know, once it's dry, you can wipe that off. All right, get a little bit and I'm gonna put it on this spot. If you feel like you're having trouble with it, try getting a new baby wipe. Sometimes that can make, make a difference. Because your baby, and I may dip my baby wipe in a little bit of water too. Like, once the baby wipe starts to dry out a little bit, it makes this a little bit more difficult. So, if you need to, just get a fresh baby wipe and keep moving. Okay, get my clean baby wipe and just wipe a little bit of the excess. I took a little too much. <laughs> it's kind of like wipe on, wipe off. Wax on, wax off if you're a Karate Kid fan or a 90, 80s kid. All right, and then last stripe. It's almost like less paint is better. Like if I don't get too much paint on my baby wipe, it goes better. I almost don't even need the second baby wipe. All right, I didn't get quite enough in this area here. So I'm just gonna go over that once more. Okay, looking at all of it to see if it looks somewhat uniform. Okay, I'm gonna discard these two and get two fresh ones for the next part. So while this is still wet, we're gonna go ahead and pull it up. I'm gonna reuse my painter's tape. So I'm just gonna stick it to the side of my craft desk here. This is a great way to paint stripes as well. That one was stuck under the craft desk. Okay, now we're gonna turn and go the other direction. Come on, don't be a pain in the butt. Do you ever talk to your craft supplies? <laughs> That's what I'm doing. All right, and I'm gonna use that little piece as a guideline. We're gonna go the other direction. If you find that your painter's tape is not sticky enough, go ahead and get fresh painter's tape. Mine is still pretty sticky. Um, as you can see, it's sticking to itself. If you stuck your painter's tape originally down on slightly damp paint, it may make your painter's tape not be as sticky. Okay, that piece is not sticking as good, I think, because I've messed with it so much. So we're just going to chuck it and get some fresh. Because there ain't no use in trying to save painter's tape if you're going to have bleed through. It's not worth it. So if you find that it's not smoothing out and sticking nicely, chuck it and start over.
the rest of this is sticking pretty good, so I don't think it'll be a problem. It is curling up a little bit though, so it's hard to see if I'm getting it straight. All right. Sorry I'm not reading very many comments. I am concentrating. Okay, we need one more piece of painter's tape to complete this. Okay, last piece. And again, this is inch and a half wide frog tape. Okay, that's probably good. It's not straight, but you know, I'm not a perfectionist. And as my t-shirt says, it doesn't have to be perfect to be amazing. <laughs> okay, smoothing this out really nicely. Now we're gonna get two more baby wipes. And we're gonna use the same blue paint. We're not changing the blue paint at all. We're just gonna change how thick we're applying the paint. So, dipped in my paint. We'll start up here at the top and we're gonna smear it on. And we're just gonna apply it. Actually, no, that, I, I told you wrong. I forget every time I do this how I'm gonna do it. So I told you wrong. We're not applying, we're not changing how thick we apply it. The, the way that it will look like buffalo plaid is because, you know, the areas where it crosses over where you've already painted blue will have like a double coat. And so that's what makes it look, you know, special. Okay, let's fold our baby wipe over. It's starting to get yucky. We're just going to do on each side of this little chickie's face instead of painting right over her face. Just try to keep your baby wipe strokes kind of going in the same direction. Whoops, I got it all over my chick that time. And I think it helps too if you try if you don't go back and forth. Like every now and then I catch myself doing that and I realize it starts to deteriorate my baby wipe faster. All right, I'm gonna chuck that one and just get a fresh one. Like I said, the keeping your baby wipe nice and moist helps. Um, and I know you guys love that word. Keeping it nice, uh, nice and moist helps spread the paint. So if you're having troubles getting that nice opaque look where it's smearing, um, it's probably because your baby wipe is too dry. So you might need to switch and get a clean, clean baby wipe. Okay, I'm trying to look. That's all baby chick. <laughs> right through there and then there. Okay. Did I miss any spots before I pull my painter's tape up? All right, I think we're done. Let me try to wipe my fingers off as best I can. And then let's peel our tape up and reveal the gorgeous buffalo plaid. I wish there was like a round of applause button on Facebook Live. Wouldn't that be awesome? <laughs> Holy crap, you guys must be sprinkling the love. We got a lot of people watching. Okay, so check this out. Look how awesome this is. Super easy. And it even looks almost like fabric. It looks like it's almost like painted on. Or not painted on. Um, it looks... I don't know, the texture that the baby wipe gives it looks really cool. So, all right, let's go ahead and finish painting the rest of it. And if you're just now joining us, I will say you can get the blank for this for $24 with the design etched in it and everything on my store. So now I'm gonna get a flat tip brush of a moderate size. This is pretty good, it's about an inch wide. And we're gonna paint our chicken. Now. I want her to kind of be like a reddish brown because we have a chicken out in our chicken yard. Her name is uh, Red and she's kind of a reddish brown. So this is a little too red. This color is called Scarlet by Deco Art. So we're gonna mix Scarlet and Canyon Orange together to create kind of a hybrid color. I'm just mixing paint all over the place tonight. All right, I'm gonna mix with the bottom of my paintbrush. This is still a very, very bright color. Hang on, hang on, hang on. We're gonna add another color. This is called Burnt Sienna. So we're just kind of darkening it up. I want kind of almost like a terracotta orangey red. I didn't add nearly as much of that. 
but I do need to tone it down. Otherwise, she's going to look like a nuclear chicken because this was like so bright. So we're toning it down and I'm making way more of this paint than I really need. Oh, well, it's not as if there's a paint shortage right now, is there? <laughs> I know everybody's freaking out because they can't. Perfect. This is the perfect color. Okay. So this is Scarlet, Canyon Orange, and Burnt Sienna all mixed together to make this lovely, uh, I don't even know. It's like a sun-dried tomato. Well, that's what we'll call this color. I just kind of made it. It's not even a real color from Deco Art that I know of. It probably is, and I just don't have that color. We're going to paint right over her face, too, because since this is all etched in the surface, we can paint right over it and go back and paint over it again later. We can still see the details. Okay, I am going to try to avoid getting this all over my baby chicks because I'm not sure how well this color will cover with yellow. I may, matter of fact, I may have to paint my baby chicks white again just to get them uh, paintable. All right, we're gonna switch to a smaller brush because there ain't no sense in struggling to get around what we gotta get around down here. Do you start with a dry brush? Yes, I do, Deb. I started my business when I was eight months pregnant with my little girl, Charlie. So she just turned five. Okay, we've got our chicken all covered here. There's a couple spots where she needs a second coat. So we're probably just gonna go ahead and do that real quick before we move on. So let me get my bigger brush again and we'll just put a second coat on her. Somebody asked the other day about the etched lines. They said, do those still show up after the door hanger is painted? The answer to that is yes, if you're looking very closely. So if you're, you know, looking pretty closely at that door hanger, you probably could see the etched lines. But the average person who's going to look at that door hanger is not going to pay attention to it that closely. They're just going to see the overall thing and be like, oh my goodness, that is gorgeous. I can't believe you painted that. How did you do that? You know, and so unless they're just really closely examining it, they're probably not even going to notice, especially once you get all of your accent lines and everything on there um, when you're done. So don't even fret about it. Okay. I'm gonna switch back to the smaller brush. This is a really small flat tip brush. It's kind of just a detail brush. <coughs> Crap, I just messed that up. Baby wipe, baby wipe. While it's still wet, you can usually wipe it up with a baby wipe. Just wipe gently. Ta-da! Just totally saved that little disaster spot. Because if I'd had to have painted over that, um, it would not have looked the same because of the buffalo plaid. Now, let's see. Her tail is a dark red. Her thingy on her head is a dark red. Her, what do you call it, comb? Tomato red, that's a good one. So this is a tomato red from Deco Art. We're gonna use that for her comb and waddles. And I'm gonna switch to a smaller flat tip brush. So many brushes, so little time. This will work. It's about a half inch size. Do you have favorite brushes listed somewhere? Um, Mallory, I do sell some in my shop. Uh, right now, we're a little low on stock on those, and so um, I've ordered some more, and they haven't come in yet, but um, I did in this past Friday's Friday Fab Five. If you if you don't watch all of my Facebook Lives, you may not have seen it, but the Facebook Live that I did on Friday, this past Friday, I do one every Friday called Friday Fab Five, and I share five of my favorite things with you guys. I shared some brushes that are very affordable, that are very similar to these, only they have plastic handles. Um, from Michaels and so Michaels right now is doing the curbside pickup and I think they even have free online shipping so if you need to go and get some new brushes um, and you you know don't want to wait for mine to come in stock you can go and grab those from Michaels they are great 
and they're very affordable. I think it was a pack of like 15 brushes for like 10 bucks and it's got like one of every shape that you could possibly need. Okay, that red covered that blue so beautifully. I'm so pleased I don't have to paint like a thousand coats. Okay, common waddles are painted. <laughs> okay, so now we're gonna paint our little chicks white. I'm gonna use that same flat tip brush I was just using. I tend to use the same brush over and over again. Um, I think I just, I get used to the way it works, like the way it, you know, moves on the canvas, so to speak. And um, I get hooked on one brush. And so I will tend to try to use the same brush throughout the whole project. Um, every now and then I'll switch up to a smaller size or something, but for the most part, I use the same one. I use a lot of flat tip brushes and that's just a personal preference. Um, I think they cover an area quickly, whoops, quickly and easily. I got some orange paint on my brush somehow and smeared it all into that white, but it's okay. Um, but you will figure out what's your, what, what kind of brush you prefer. Like the more you paint, the more you will figure that kind of stuff out. Everybody kind of has their own preferences on things. You know, some people may use angle brushes a lot and I don't hardly ever use them. I do when I'm shading, but that's really the only time. Some people may use round tip brushes a lot. I really don't. I only use those when I'm doing details and things. Um, and at the end, and sometimes I don't even use them then. So it really just depends on what brush you get comfortable with, what you're used to using. I'm just giving these little chicks a coat of white because the blue kind of made a mess on them. I'm also smushing the paint down into the etched lines. Somebody had asked me that um, in a previous Facebook Live. Um, so the etched lines, like down in them, they're kind of dark looking. And so sometimes you have to kind of like take your brush and just kind of smush it and smush the paint into the etched lines a little bit. So that uh, it, they, they kind of, it's like putting on concealer. Like, you know, if you think of it like makeup, it's like putting concealer on to hide your wrinkles. And so that's kind of what it's doing. I like using metaphors. <laughs> that is a metaphor, right? I don't know. That was, English was not my strongest class in school. Believe it or not, art wasn't either. I avoided taking art in school. I thought I would be bad at it kind of sad now because I'm like, man, I could have discovered a love of painting much sooner had I taken art. But then, then again, maybe I wouldn't have because it's not like they were painting door hangers in art class. I don't know. All right, let's give these chickies a dry. I, I think because with the flat tip brushes, I can do a lot of different kinds of strokes. I can cover an area quickly. I can go along like an edge quickly, you know, to make a nice smooth line. And I can also turn it up and down and do a thinner line like you would do with a round tip brush. So it feels kind of like a Swiss army knife of paint brushes. It can do just about anything. I don't even know that these really need a second coat of white, but we're doing it anyways, just to make sure they're covered good so that my yellow will be very yellow. Uh, no, I don't have a goat with a flower crown yet, but I do have it on my laundry list of things to do because somebody requested a goat and a sheep, I believe. So I will work on those. Okay, this color I'm doing is marigold. I'm going to use that for the body of my little chickies. And you could change up the numbers of um, chicks that you have on here based on your number of kids. I'm doing four, even though I have three kids. I'll just consider my husband one of them. We won't tell him that. Do I have a beginner's kit? Not a beginner's like supply kit, but I do have the Amazon affiliate shop where I have my favorite tools linked. This yellow is gonna look so good with the blue and the contrast of the bright red hen. I may have to darken up the color of her comb and waddles because it's very much blending in with the color of her body and I did not want that. I didn't realize it till it dried and it's really blending in a lot. So I may have to darken it or something so that there's more contrast. 
This marigold color is perfect for these baby chicks though. I'm just painting right over their little faces. We'll paint their eyes and things back in later. So I can even paint their little wings with this flat tip brush if I turn my brush up and down and put it in the wing tip and then pull it up. If you have a hard time making circles or going around the head of the chick like that, I recommend using a filbert tip brush for that. It's gonna make doing a circular area much easier for you. Okay, we don't have enough paint, hold on. Add some white or yellow, I may have to, just to make it look different. Somebody said it looks good on camera. Okay, well maybe it's just the lights in here. <laughs> Charlie just tried barging into my craft room and tripped over some shipping boxes. Are you okay, baby? You're okay. Shut that I door. think she's afraid she's in trouble. You're not in trouble. I just wanted to watch. Shut the door. <laughs> I think she's tired. Somebody's watching me from Central America. That's cool. I'm going to have to learn Spanish. Hola, me llamo Tamara. Como esta? I know Spanish, just not very well. I took four years of it in high school, and then I minored in it in college, but... The problem is I never studied abroad, so I never really maintained it. And so my vocabulary and my memory, my memory of the different verbs and things is really rusty. <laughs> but I do remember some of it. Um, let's see if I can remember a phrase. Me gusta pintar. I like to paint. Is that right? Tell me if that's right, Roxana. S. El Pollo, that's a chicken. <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> you guys who speak Spanish are probably like cracking up. And you can use graphite paper to transfer it to your wood. What did I get that? All of a sudden I was like, why did I squirt out an orange paint? It was for the the little beak and things, which that's still not gonna be bright enough. Hang on, we're gonna use a different orange. Change of plans. Although I feel like I'm wasting it if I don't put it back in the bottle. Hold on, hold on. So this is how you don't waste paint. You scoop it with your paintbrush, you scrape it back in the bottle. And right now, like, because I can't get more supplies, I'm trying to be very careful with not wasting paint and stuff. Like I almost feel like I need to squirt that new color that I made by mixing colors back into something. May have to find an old paint bottle. Yes, I am still using MDF. So I'm switching to this one. It's called pumpkin. It's a much brighter orange. Um, I didn't think the other one would show up when I started to paint it. So let's give this one a try. And I switched to a much smaller flat tip brush. There we go. Yes, this is going to show up much better, but it may take like three coats because I'm painting over red. That's okay. We can use the hair dryer and speed it up. Plus, I'll paint their little their little beaks this color. I got too much on her little beak. It's not smoothing out nicely. Let me pick it up and put it on theirs. Yeah, if you ever feel like you've got too many brush strokes, just go over it and then wipe it off on a paper towel or paint in another area of the door hanger like I'm doing now. So, just picking it back up because I put too much down to smooth out all of those little rumples and wrinkles. And then you can always scrape it off on a paper towel if you don't need to put it anywhere else. Put a second coat on their little orange noses. I think that'll be enough on the chicks. It probably won't require a third coat, but Mama Hen's beak is gonna require a third coat and I'm gonna have to get my hair dryer out. Because if you notice, sometimes, and that one's going to have to have a third coat, sometimes when you're painting your second or your third coat, you're just pushing the paint around. And then somebody asked if I hand paint all of my door hangers. I hand paint, like, all of these that I'm teaching you on Facebook Live and whatnot, but if we're selling the painted ones, those are replicas of the original. Those are not hand painted by me. 
they're replicated from the original hand painted one if that makes sense okay it's looking pretty good I'm really excited. You got 30 out of your 32 colors you chose. That's, that's, you really can't complain about that, can you? That's great. All right, so now I'm getting a filbert tip brush and I'm gonna use white and we're just gonna paint inside her eyes. I'm not gonna paint the eyelid. She's kind of got like an eyelid instead, and so I'm not painting the entire circle white. And this will take more than one coat to cover this red well but it's almost worth it not to have to paint over all of this or paint around all of this. And then my little chickies, their eyes are white. And then we'll add the black in later. Let me dry this. Okay, I think I'm gonna be able to get away with two coats of white, maybe. There we go. I agree, it's starting to look very, like the, the color of her is turning out now that it's dried a little bit redder than I wanted it to be. And so her comb and waddles don't look as contrasting. I wanted them to be a different color. So I may have to darken up that red so that it stands out differently from the rest. Okay. My chicks, um, they probably look fine on camera, but up close, like there is a lot, whoops, I just nearly made a big mess. There is a lot of black like, strokes in the yellow. And so now that they're really nice and dry, I'm gonna do a third coat of yellow on these little chicks just to get those weird stroke lines out because there's a lot of places that are kind of not yellow. There's, it's like there's a little bit of white showing through or something. I don't normally have this much trouble with this color, but I think it's just because, um, you know, we've got so many layers of paint underneath there. And I was trying to do my second and third coat while it was still wet, so that causes some trouble too. But that's okay. We can do another coat of yellow. It's not gonna kill us. It's just gonna teach us patience. <laughs> Do a little bit around her head here too. Just gotta be careful not to get it on her eyes. There we go. Oh, and I almost forgot their little feet. Two of them have little feet down here and I almost forgot to paint those. So let me get out um, the orange and paint their little feet down here. Cause I almost forgot that. These two are sitting on their feet. You can't see them, but these, but two of them have little feet sticking out. The ones that are facing forward. It's all in the details. Owls would be cute. Um, to make my designs, I use an app called Procreate on an iPad, and I draw everything with an Apple Pencil. It's uh, kind of a steep learning curve to figure out, but once you kind of get the hang of it, it's it's pretty fun. But like the it'll it's kind of frustrating to learn at first. <clears throat> okay, now let's paint the little chickie's eyes black. Let me get some black. What is your favorite paintbrush to use? Probably the flat tip. 
Okay, I'm running low on black in this bottle. Come on now. I always think things like this look so weird until you get the eyes painted and that's like, oh, now it totally makes sense. Comes to life. Charlie's dying to come in here. I can hear her asking her dad, can I go in there? <laughs> She's getting a little bit stir crazy and like missing um, social time. She misses getting to go out and see people and socialize and she's such a social little kid. So at the end of this video, we may have to have some Charlie social time so she can come on and introduce herself. Okay, now they all have eyeballs, <laughs> finally. Okay, we're getting very close to having all of, the, all of the major parts painted. I think we need to redo the tails real quick. So I'm just gonna probably mix a little bit of black in with, let me see, in with the red that I've already used. Let me find my paintbrush I wanna use. I wanna use one of these flat tips. I'm just going to dip my brush in a little bit of the black and swirl it in the red to make a darker red. Oh, that's too much. Let's get some of that red. We're just going to color mix like crazy today. If you use too much black, then you're like, oh man, and you got to just keep adding color. Okay, let's see what that looks like. It does make it not really dark. more like a brick red now. Okay, I think that helped a little bit. All right, so next part, let me dry it and then we're gonna get our paint pens out and do some finishing touches. Oh my goodness, you know what I completely forgot? Looking at my example photo of the one I designed, I totally forgot the nest. The whole nest that they're supposed to be sitting in. So we're gonna have to um, add that in. So in case, you guys are painting one of these take notes that that is something you will have to add in it's not etched into the door hanger because it would have been really hard to etch and make it look right okay this is the color i was looking for so i may use two or three different colors of brown so we're gonna squirt out some burnt sienna we'll get a lighter color this is called honey brown because you know our nest is not all going to be the same color of brown and then we'll use dark chocolate so we got three colors of brown here and then I'm just gonna use this little bitty flat tip brush. And we're gonna start with the darker color. And we're just gonna start where the chick is at. I'm gonna put my brush as close to her as I can and then flick outward. And so we'll just do some little strokes to make it look like they're sitting on a bed of, you know, hay and sticks and whatever the nest is made out of. Don't let this part freak you out. Okay, and then the nest goes up over here. Um, there's even a little bit of it sticking up behind these chicks. You can even get it kind of on top of the chicks a little bit because they're, um, you know, kind of like it's showing on their feathers. I'm starting with the darker color and then we're going to build the lighter colors on top of that. Okay, now I'm going to go to the burnt sienna color and just add it. Actually, I'm going to switch to a different brush too. I'm going to switch to a flat tip, or I mean a, a round tip brush. Because it kind of allows you to make that like hay stroke, like a little flick, almost like grass. I painted those little chickies feet and now I realize the chickies feet may not even show up in all of this hay. But doing this in three different colors will add a lot of like texture down here. And I really don't want any of that blue showing through when I'm done.
This part may freak you out a little bit if you're a little bit of a perfectionist or a control freak. So try to just relax and go with it. I know that's probably terrible advice if you're a control freak, but... So we did the darker colors in the back, and now we're doing the honey brown on the top. And I'm also trying to mask or hide any of the blue buffalo plaid that was in the back. So anywhere where I see blue, I'm kind of adding a little bit of the honey brown on top of that to kind of hide and cover it up. Up close, it looks like a hot mess. So hopefully it looks good from afar. Okay, I need a little bit of the darker color right in here. I'm getting too much honey brown. Let me get some of the dark brown. Just trying to cover up some of that blue right through there. And then right through here. Okay, this is the point where you're gonna wanna step back a little bit and look and be like, okay, how does it look? Is there any spots that I missed or that look don't look right? I think mine looks pretty decent. So we're just gonna stop while we're ahead. I'll show you what I've got so far. Yes, the honey brown really helped. It kind of made it dimensional. Whoops, okay. So up close, it's a real big mess. But back here, it looks pretty good. Okay, I'm gonna try real hard not to get my boob in the wet paint down here because I got all kinds of wet paint going on along the bottom of my door hanger. Let's get our paint pens out. Let's see. <clears throat> so, here it is. It was in a different cup. I knew I couldn't find it. So, I've got the medium size paint pen. Uh, it's black. And we are going to mix match. Yeah, that's probably right. We're going to outline all of the major details with this. So, like the common waddles. This is where it hides any of your um, imperfections. It also hides like the little etched lines and it hides the fact that you might have a shaky hand when you paint. So these little paint pens are fabulous for that. It's kind of like adding in the coloring book lines after you've painted the picture or after you've colored it. And sometimes I don't even get right on top of it. I like, like that red is bleeding out from under there and I don't even care. Like it looks fine. So we're not going to worry about it. <clears throat> Go all the way around the eye and then cover her eyelid. There we go. And then we're going to come down here and do the chicks. I may start with their heads because the nest is still pretty wet and I don't want to get this mixed in with the nest. And then I may use a smaller paint pen on the little chickies faces. <clears throat> we still have to do the lettering too. Ah! I just told you guys that I wasn't going to use these on the chickies faces and there I go. Covering it. It's just a little bit thick. I don't think I like that. It's all right, I've already committed. I've got to continue at this point. <laughs> it almost looks like glasses. <laughs> ah, worst case scenario, if I hate it, I can paint over it. Okay, now we can do the little details like the wings and the body. It's always better to do this when your paint is really dry. And I'm always trying to do this on Facebook Live before my paint has fully dried. And it's a struggle. Okay. Because now I've got paint all over my paint pen from the door hanger. All right. Okay. I missed her little arm over here. 
Okay, looks pretty good. We'll stop there and we'll get the skinnier pin. This is the one, mil one millimeter, three millimeter size. This was the size I intended to trace the eyes in. It's all right, if I don't make mistakes, how will you guys ever like, ever know that I'm not perfect? <laughs> Cause I know some of you guys are probably like, she never messes up. Yeah, she does. She does for sure. okay when it's all done you might not even notice it and like this one I'm gonna have to go around her eye a little bit thicker because I did not stay on the lines so some of these chicks may look like they've got a little bit of an issue they may look like a little bit goofy like they didn't hatch fully or something okay some of my kids act that way sometimes all right let's get the white and we'll do some little accents on the eyes let's see maybe like hang on my paint pen needs it's got to get it going little dots in the eyes these kind of wake the cheekies up and make them look alive there we go let's do some in mama's eyes forgot to add her eyelashes so I'm getting the skinniest pin out I'm just gonna do some little eyelashes over here we'll see am I missing anything else yes and then get my white pen and we're gonna just do some little accents on their little heads their bellies you no know, just to add some like shape And then you can even add some, hang on, let me skip, switch to the skinniest one. Whoa, get back in there. This just adds some fun little accents. Makes them look alive. All right, I think that um i may add some actually let, well we may give this some more time to dry before i do but i may add some more accents to the the nest part in a moment but we're going to switch back to the medium size paint pen and we're going to switch to our medium paint pen and we're going to do our lettering so this lettering is etched in the surface of the door hanger i'm not having to freehand it Makes this super quick and easy. I can outline it like this with the paint pen. And then I can go back and fill it in. I may fill these in with a brush instead of a paint pen. It'll be faster. So I'm just outlining them now. Pretty much just tracing over these little etched lines and then I can go back and fill them in. Like I said, if you're just joining us, you can get the design for this one by saying the word link. It'll send it to your Facebook Messenger. You can get the template for $5. You can get the paint or the painted version, or you can get the um, the etched blank to paint yourself in the shop. We have four different sizes: 20 inch, 12 inch, 8 and 6. 
This is the 20 inch that size that I'm painting now. So if you're doing a full size door hanger, this is the size that I would recommend. <clears throat> it's also easier on a door hanger like this that has this many details to paint a larger one. You know, sometimes people will get 12 inch, I think, just to save a little bit of money, but then it's hard to, it's hard to really do all the details on a smaller size design. Oops, got outside my lines a little bit there. Okay, so everything's outlined. Now I'm gonna, you could use your paint pen to fill all that in if you wanted to. I'm gonna switch to this one and I'm gonna water down my paint just a little bit. So I've got black paint already in here and I'm gonna add just a little bit of water to thin it out because it'll go on much smoother and quicker with it being thin. Is the etched template offered if you are in the template club? Um, yes, the template is offered in the template club if you were a member back in, if you joined before April 1st, you should have gotten this template. So if you join Template Club now, you won't get access to April's templates. You will start in May and get the May templates. So um, by the way, I do have a couple of housekeeping things to share with you guys. If you are um, a Template Club member or if you um, have sent emails to support and stuff, some, my team has asked that I share with you guys that, um, so the thing with Template Club is that you're payment processes on the first of the month and so you may not get your templates until the second or third of the month depending on how quickly your payment process is because some people's for some reason will pop process like first and it may just depend on your bank or your card or whatever but some people's will process first thing in the morning and some people's won't process till the end of the day and then you guys are like emailing us and saying i can't find my templates i'm in template club and i haven't gotten them yet so just try to be um, patient with the system because it's all kind of like automated and it's supposed to send them to you after your payment processes. So sometimes you may not get them until April the 1st, or I mean April the 2nd or the 3rd or May the 2nd or the 3rd. Um, and it'll just depend when your payment process is. Also, if you have emailed support or emailed us at all, um, we are... I'm telling my team to not work around the clock anymore because sometimes they will stay up to like midnight or later answering your all's support emails and stuff. And so I want them to be able to have family time and a life too. And so I've asked that they only reply to y'all's emails during business hours. So if you email us at three o'clock in the morning, <laughs> you, you shouldn't expect a response until the next business day between like nine and five or something like that. So um, just try to, you know, be patient with us. We, we're just a group of mamas who are trying to run this business and answer emails and things like that. And we're doing the best we can. And so if you email us, you should get a response within 24 to 48 hours, um, you know, depending on when you email. So if it's on a weekday, then it would be 24 to 48 hours. But if it's on like a Saturday, you may not hear from us till Monday. Just because um, I've asked my ladies to take, you know, the weekends off and to not work around the clock so that they, you know, can have a little bit of a family life too. So we're just trying to set some, you know, parameters and things like that so that we can, you know, just enjoy a little bit of time with our families and not feel like we're slaves to the email inbox. <laughs> because believe you me, we could be in there 24-7 and still probably never get all of the emails. Um, well, we probably could get all the emails answered, but we would just, there's never an end to it because you get them all answered. And then by the time you're ready to close the inbox, there's five more. It's just, that's always how it is. But I appreciate you guys. And I love that, you know, y'all are so supportive of my business. And so I just hope that you guys understand that we can't answer the inbox 24 seven. Um, we'll only be doing it during business hours. Um, Monday through Friday and so if you contact us on the weekend it may be Monday before you hear back from us um, like you normally would and so I love that you guys are deciding to pick up a paintbrush and learn a new skill because there's really 
never been a better time to, to learn something new. I, I actually saw a study the other day that was talking about, I think it was done over in the UK, and it said that more people right now, what was it, 46% or maybe it was 64, I don't know, I got the number mixed up. Either way, it was nearly half the amount of people that they polled said that right now the way they wanted to spend their time was learning a new skill. And so I just think that's awesome. Whether it's painting or not, you know, the fact that people are taking this time to learn how to cook or sew or, you know, just anything, crochet, it's such a good thing for people. It's it's good for the brain. It's good for the soul. It's just therapeutic in general. Okay, that looks awesome. Okay, so we've got all of our lettering painted on. And now I was going to add some more details to the nest now that it's dried. So I've got my tiny little paint pen. And um, this is the white one. And we're just going to kind of add some quick little... I don't know if this is gonna look good or not. So if you don't like it, don't do it on yours. But I'm already committed at this point, so. We'll do them in white and black. So there's the white. Um, okay, I don't know. I'd have to go in and check, uh, Kathy, but I would think that if you ordered on the 7th, it probably has, or it may be shipping out tomorrow, because like I said, I'm ship doing some shipping tomorrow if you ordered before Monday morning. Okay, that just added a little bit of texture to the, the thing. Okay, so now I'm gonna get the largest black paint pen that I have. This is the seven millimeter bullet tip, and we're just gonna outline this door hanger. To kind of pull it all together and call it done. This big one is really great for doing thick outlining. Okay, let me rotate it so I can do the last line here. I couldn't reach it without getting my hand in the wet paint. I got off the line a little bit. It's okay. Okay, this door hanger is done. Thank you guys for sticking around and watching me paint this. I am gonna keep this one on my door. Um, I love chickens, so I don't think I'll ever get rid of this one. What kind of hanger do you put on them? I staple jute string to the back, and sometimes I add a bow and sometimes I don't, Melinda. So um, I don't know if I'll add one to this or not. If I did, it would probably be on the string just because the lettering takes up so much of it that there's not much room for a bow. So thank y'all for joining me tonight. 